Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so happy for my next guest, Miss Tierra Baker. What's up? Hi. You can call me Makia. Look, we, we're What's first cousins. Tierra Makia. No, because I go by Tierra, but gotcha. you can call me. Makia. Social media names like <laughs> that's so cool. But yeah, this is my baby cousin. She's um she's in Alabama and I'm here in Tampa, Florida. So I'm so excited to kind of pick your brain about the latest uh, sermon for, oops, sorry about that. I guess I should turn my phone on, vibrate. Uh, I'm so excited to talk about the latest version of the sermon. I counsel a bunch of people, and when I counsel every issue in their life, whether it's financial, whether it's emotional, whether it's something that they're dealing with anger, it always stems back to a relational issue. An issue with a parent, an issue with their first boyfriend. For uh, Pastor Mike Todd. So in overall, like, how have you enjoyed the series for Transformation Church for Relationship Goals? I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and it came at a perfect time. Like while we're in this quarantine, we have downtime. We're reevaluating our lives and really like what's important to us. And I think that's what this quarantine did for a lot of people. Like you really start to prioritize like what's important, what you really want out of life. Cause people's lives are being taken instantly. Life is too short. I mean, like you just had to really sit down and evaluate, like, evaluate relationships and really seeing people and certain situations for what it really is. So I really enjoyed the series and I'm like kind of freshly single. So I'm, relearning myself so this came at a perfect time because i'm rediscovering like what i truly want in my future husband or what i want for myself honestly just learning relearning myself after a six-year relationship and what i truly want and how i want to move forward at this point so that's, that's perfect. perfect so this i think this sermon was like perfect for that so it's like get yourself right um focus on yourself and then after you kind of master that then you start to look um and for that that special man so i think this I, I have really enjoyed the series, especially this sermon. Happily ever before. Like we always hear happily ever after, but I love this happily ever before. And I was like, what happens when you find this person? Do you change? Do you become something else? Do you start doing something now because you have a person? And she began to look at me and she was like, what are you trying to say, Pastor Mike? Because, you know, everybody's thinking I'm trying to preach to him, and I kind of am. But at the, at the end of the day, I said, do you know that God has purpose for you before a person? So, essentially, what Pastor Mike taught saying that before you get with somebody else, there's a couple principles that you have to adhere by. And I'll go through and run through those right quick. Um, and so those principles are, I should have my notes already open. So before you even get that person, before you get married, there's a couple things you have to do. One, you have to focus on the presence of God, which is one. Next, the place. Three, provision. Next, personality. Next is purpose. And then lastly is parameters. Mm -hmm. And so why well, don't you jump to the very first one? The first one is the presence of God. Um, I love the example that uh, Pastor Mike Todd said that when Adam was born in Genesis, um, when Adam was created, um, God breathed into him. And so one of the first things that Adam did was like, open up his eyes and he was in the presence of God, kind of like a newborn baby when they first come out. Um, and so one of the challenges that Pastor Mike Todd said, we should do the seven day challenge of as soon as we open our eyes, we should like be in God's presence, start praying. I'll be honest, I've been slipping. I did it like the first day or two and then <laughs> slipping. So what's like kind of like your plan for like kind of getting in the presence of God? Mm -hmm. So I've been working on this a lot. And now it's kind of easy because like with the quarantine and just social distancing, like things are a lot more lax right now. So I have the time to do it, but the test is gonna really be when things kind of get back to the new normal or whatever. And you're going and working and having all these things to do and just making time for that. But as of right now, I have been, every morning I wake up, of course I say, thank you God. And then I get up, I come in here in my little office, whatever. And I do a devotional. I, Lately, I've been doing the Jesus Calling, and then I just, I sit down, I started like journaling. I don't write, I don't like to write, but I found that it sticks better when I write. So I'll read my devotional, 
Um, and then there's this technique for studying devotionals that I like, because before I would read them and then sometimes it wouldn't really stick. So I do soap and it's just like scripture, ob observation, application, and prayer. And it's kind of like a concise little thing. Hey, one more time, I I've never heard of that. What is it? I got it from TikTok. <laughs> Uh -huh. that's canceled now but anyway <laughs> it's it's so and it's you can pick a passage from the bible that you want to read or if you have a devotional i do a de devotional first um and then i do i read the scriptures that it gives that goes along with the devotional and then i write those out and then i do the observation o um and it's whatever i observe about whatever i get from the passage or from the devotion um a application and just how I can apply it to my daily life. And then prayer, I just pray about it, whatever I receive from it or whatever, you know, ask God to continue to reveal whatever revelation that he has for me from what I just read or what I just did. That's good. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing well, that. It's really been that here, okay? <laughs> you make me look out. No, no, you gotta no, start somewhere, you gotta start somewhere. Good. So I do need to be more detailed. Um, one thing I like to do first thing in the morning is like do like a quick prayer, but like you said, since we're quarantined, we should, at least for me, I should be taking more time to pray, more time to do the, the Bible. Um, I'm kind of like you with the Bible app. I need to be more consistent of doing it in the morning. Like I think I feel better when I do it at a consistent time every day, as opposed to kind of just doing it throughout the day randomly when I almost forget about it. So I want to be more consistent. It sets the tone for your day. Like it really does. Like I can, I notice a complete difference in the mornings where I actually get up and make time to spend time with God, like it sets the tone for the day. Like I, my day is calm. I'm like zen, and who's mm. <laughs> But it's just like it really sets the tone for your day, and it's just a good way to start. Cause I'm really not a morning person, so yeah, it it, it I highly suggest ten out of ten recommend. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's good. I um, mean, also with his presence, I really love how he gave us practical advice. And so there's one part where he's speaking directly to women and directly to men. So I'd love to give your advice on his uh, direction to women. He says, uh, Pastor Mike Todd, that uh, women should never date a man who is not in God's presence. Because he said, if God is not speaking to him, he won't know how to lead the woman. Um, Ladies, I said, ladies, don't ever date a man who doesn't know how to get in God's presence. Why, Pastor Mike? Because if God's not speaking to him, he will not know how to handle you. The only way that I know how to do everything in my life is I go to the one who created the one I'm supposed to be with. Um, when you heard that, what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I highly, I really agree with this. Um, cause this is something that's important to me. Like growing up, I've grown up in a Christian household. My dad was, it will, is a strong, um, spiritual leader in our family. Um, I've seen him lead. I've seen him be the head of our family. And, you know, my mom, you know, follows, she's also a strong spiritual leader, but she, she submits to my father, if that makes sense. Yeah. So for me, that was something I always wanted. I wanted a strong spiritual leader and a man because that's what I've always seen. And I completely agree with the statement because how can a man lead you, or men are, that's just in their nature to lead, to be providers, to you know, be the head of the household. How can you lead me and you don't even, you can't, you know, how can I put it? You're not the spiritual leader. So yeah. I've seen it where so many guys, they can lead you in every area. They, they're bosses at everything, but then they don't have that relationship with God. And they, they fall short in that area. It's like, okay, who's going to pray for me when I can't pray for myself? Mm. Yeah. That's so good. That's yeah. real good. And I feel like that's very important to have in a relationship. If I see a guy that I may be interested in, his relationship is just not there. I, I kind of fall back a little bit. I'm not gonna say anything, but you know, I'm just I'm just watching, kind of yeah. fall back, and I know that that relationship, especially the kind of person I am, all that you don't have to have that relationship with God. I'm not saying that I'm like crazy or anything, but I need someone who can fight these because these are spiritual warfares that you have to fight, especially in relationships. Exactly. And especially if you're gonna be together for a long time, you have a lot of a lot of adversity to overcome, a lot of the tension that you get through, and so you gotta have that that good uh, Bible base foundation yes that's it 
I agree with that. After Pastor Mike Todd said that at the sermon, I actually reached out to one of my female friends and she said a lot of females, um, I didn't really think about it this way, but a lot of females like, like projects. They like to kind of get a guy who maybe he looks good, maybe makes a lot of money, but maybe the spiritual nature isn't there. So they kind of like try to improve them. Um, and she was telling me that a lot of times that just doesn't work because a lot of times the person is who they are and people can change, but a lot of times you're going to be like dragging the change and it doesn't work out. And I made it my vow. I said, I'm never, I don't want to change anybody. I'm not, that's not what I'm here for. I want to help you grow and develop and, but I don't want to force you to change or force you to be something that you don't want to be. And if you're just not there, then you're not there. And I'm not going to force you. We can still be just friends. That's it. And keep it pushing. Mm -hmm. Keep pushing. And I also love his advice to men. I'm going to get your advice as this um, after I give mine. Well, he says, men, um, we should never date a woman because she's just pretty. Date her because she can get lost in God. Don't date her because she look good. Date her because she can get lost in God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I heard this almost through my phone, I was like, this is so true. Like, you have to do more than be a pretty face because sometimes, like, just because you're pretty on the outside, it doesn't, like, that doesn't reflect your heart. And kind of like we just touched on earlier, if you're going to get married, you're going to go through a lot of adversity, a lot of tough times, and cuteness not going to lead you through that. You know what I'm saying? Like, having a pretty face and a, a good body not going to lead you through that. And so mm -hmm. I, when he said that, like, I received that wholly. He was talking to me. Yes. <laughs> that was, yeah. And I, I completely agree. Same thing. Um, like you said, a pretty face is not going to get you through that. What's going to get you through is prayer. And, you, you know, who, who are you going to turn to when things go wrong? Because you don't need to be telling everybody your business. You don't got to tell your friends everything that goes down between your relationship. I need to know that if something goes down, or and likewise, you should know if something goes down, I'm turning to God, not to my friends. You know, it's good to have those people who are there for you or people who have gone through the same thing and you can get relationship advice or certain th on certain topics. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, every time something goes down, you need to turn to God. And I need to know that that's where you're turning to, not... Mm -hmm anything else you're preaching, look, you're preaching already <laughs> preaching real good. i love the second area the second area is place um pastor mike is teaching us that sometimes the place that you hate uh is maybe the place that god has you there for a reason uh, essentially your favor is not where you want to be your favor is where god left you Th this is so good because sometimes especially as millennials we like to like go from place to place i want to live in this city to live in that city uh go here go there when you heard him say that, what were your thoughts on uh, being in that, like, the place where God wants you to be? Yeah, that's a tough one because it can be miserable. It's like, I know, I, I think the most common situation is maybe a job that you hate, a job that you're just not happy with. You originally got it, you know, because it's something to pay the bills. You had, had to have something to pay the bills, but now it's just, like, you'd rather be happy and out of that job than, you know, there and miserable. So that hit home because I have been in that situation before um and sometimes I have to just okay God I know everything happens for a reason that even if I go right now I don't even know where I would go so sometimes there's two ways you can look at it you can take a leap of faith but sometimes you just before you do anything you need to pray and ask God like is this what you want me to do because if he wants you to leave he'll let you know you may not know what you what he has lined up for you next but he'll say okay now it's time for you to go but if he hasn't told you to leave you need to sit there and say, okay, what is it that you're trying to teach me? What is it that you're trying to show me here? Look for him in every situation. Why, you know, what is my purpose here? Mm -hmm. Cause it's, it's so easy to just look at it. as like me, 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 I'm miserable, but you never know whose life you're impacting by being where you are. You don't never know what purpose God is truly using you for while you're in this place. So I try to look for him in the small things. Um, how he may be using me or even using others to help me while I'm in this place. Oh, so good. I always think there's a purpose for it. You may not understand it or know why you're still there, why you're stuck or why you're not moving or why people have gone on, but you're still here. But you just have to, you have to look for God in, in those situations. That's my only way to get through. That's whenever true. I'm That's stuck. true. Cause I think I'm a firm believer that God allows all things to work together for your good. Um, and so even if you're going through this situation where you're in a place where you don't like, you have to hang on in there because there's a brighter day coming. Um, Pastor Mike Todd used the example where he was offered a job making like $100,000 in New York City, I think as a DJ or a producer or something to that effect. 
I mean, he wanted to move to New York City, but he prayed about it and God was like, don't go there. So he stayed himself in, uh, in Oklahoma. And that's really cool because for me, I would jump. Um, what you say? The end goal, I think the end goal for me is to live in New York. I think, I feel like I can do it. I've been in New York a couple times. So. I can see you there. You what? I can see you there. You know what? When I see you, I feel like I see you in LA. Period. <laughs> I see me there. <laughs> I went once and I loved it. I could see yeah. you there too. Yeah. Could you see yourself in New York? <sighs> hustle bustle. I know. It's so much. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. I haven't been in New York, but from what I've researched and studied and seen, yeah. it, it, I could vacation there, you know, a couple times yeah. trips. Like, I wouldn't mind taking trips back and forth from LA to New York. Gotcha. Yeah, that'd be dope. <laughs> But yeah, I, for me, it's just being content in the season I am because I feel like I'm always kind of looking for the next thing. And when you look for the next thing all the time, you kind of miss the present. So right now I'm in a place at, at work and in Tampa, Florida, where I love, so I'm just going to stay content, keep praying. And then years and years from now, if it's time for me to move to a different avenue, then I'll jump at that. But until then, I'm just learning to be content in this season. Contentment, yes. Contentment. That's it. That's it. The next one, uh, the third area is God's provision. So number three, provision. Uh, if the place that you're in has no provision from God, uh, you may be in the wrong place. Your provision may not be good. Uh, it may not be a good taste, but the people in the wilderness. So he used the example of the people in the wilderness. Um, they were supposed to be there for only 11 days. Um, and every day they were going out eating manna, but they ended up uh, being there for 40 years. They were out of that provision. So how do you feel about the, the provision of God? Um, yeah, like you said, like, if the place you're in is not giving you the right provision, then you might not be in the right place. And I think that happens a lot of times when we move too fast, um, or we, we rush into things, or we're somewhere God didn't call us to be, but we want to be there so bad. So, and this happens a lot, I think, when we ask, God will give us pretty much whatever we ask for, but we have to make sure what we're asking for is what he wants for our life. So whenever I pray for things, I pray, God, I want this, I want this to happen. You give me this vision. I want it to happen, but in your will, in your timing. So I feel like when you're in a place and the provision isn't working for you, it's probably because you're somewhere you aren't supposed to be, or at least not yet, or you didn't heed to God's voice. You try to do things your own way. So that's my take on that. I love that. You have to stay in God's provision because he's going to make you so much happier. Sometimes things that look good aren't always good. Some mm -hmm. people that look good today aren't really good to date. Some jobs that look good to take aren't really good to take. And so we also have to stay in God's provision. Um, and even though you may end up hurting a little bit, in the end, uh, he's going to allow, I think, all things to work for your good. So you have to oh, yeah. stay in that one. Yes. I <laughs> The next one, I think this is number four. You know, I can't, I can't add. Yeah. One, two, uh, four. Yeah. <laughs> personality. Um, God wants to give you an identity in him before you get a person. I think this is so big. And I feel like, honestly, I see this not to down, uh, not to step on women, but I feel like I see this in the wrong way with women where like they'll start dating a dude and then they start to change. They start to kind of cater their likes and their interests towards the man. And I guess men do that to some extent, but I feel like I see that way more with, with ladies. So, so what are your thoughts on that? How, how important do you think it is to have the personality in God before you get your, your husband? I think that's so important. Oh, extremely important. Because you see time and time again, women, well, I see it commonly with women too. Um, they'll get in relationships or even marriages and they kind of let their own hobbies go to, please, well not say please, how can I put this? They kind of let themselves go to be the wife and everything they think they should be for their husband. I believe you can still, you should still have your hobbies, the things you love, the things that make you you. And you can also be the wife that you need to be for your husband or you know, the girlfriend that you need to be in that relationship. And so I think it's so important to have the personality before you get into that relationship knowing who you are, what you like, what you stand for, what you don't, um, what you're willing to compromise on, all these things, like you have to have that personality and not be, you know, so wavering in that once you get in a relationship because you think that's what's gonna keep the person or what you think they like. Like, so I definitely agree that 
you have to have the personality before you get in a relationship because I have seen it where people get in relationships, they change. They yeah. they change a lot. Um, and it's really sad to see because it's like, who is this person? Like, the, especially with, you know, friends, different friendships, and you see them in a relationship, how they are with the person. And really, relationships can either bring out the best in you or the worst. And mm-hmm. you really see that um, if you don't really know who you are and confident in who you are before you get to the relationship. Gotcha. That's good. Uh, I feel like God is like the ultimate. He's like the painter. And we're like the, the portrait. Like he's crafted us. He created us. And so we should learn our own personalities in him first before getting linked up with somebody else. And that we should keep kind of moving forward in that. Um, I love it because God calls us a masterpiece. And um, God doesn't want to, Pastor Mike said this, God doesn't want to have to look down and defend that we look like him. So when we're out um, in our everyday lives, like we should be able, people should look at us and say like, oh, that's, that's God's child. That's like a Christian. That's, um, mm-hmm. that, that's something that is part of us. And I'm, I'll be very, very honest. I'm definitely a whole lot better at it now. I feel like when I was younger, maybe I tried to hide that I was a Christian or maybe I wasn't as vocal um, maybe it, well, it wasn't cool about it, but then you start going through life and you start going through circumstances. It's like, I give God all praise. I can't, can't hide. It's like, a, it's part of who I am now. Can't hide it even if I tried. So I, I have that personality mm-hmm. of that. That's good. I love that. The next one is, I believe this is five. Yes. Uh, purpose. Um, so he took it from Genesis 2 and 15, uh, where God says, I will place the man in the garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. And the key word was tend. And I love it because his job was to cultivate. So Adam essentially had a job. He had a purpose. He was already kind of working in his, uh, working in his presence, working in his job. And so one of the things that this sermon made me think about was my purpose. And to be honest, I 100% still don't know what that is. I still got to do some soul searching, still got to work at it a little bit. Maybe I got a couple areas where I know maybe it'll lead, but what about you? Do you know what your purpose is? And what, like, what were your thoughts on the, the purpose uh, in her sermon? I'm still learning my purpose, like what it is that I'm here to do. I see it sometimes in different situations when I'm reacting with, um, you know, or interacting with other people, especially working in like retail. You come in contact with so many different people. Um, and I was actually talking about this with my coworkers one day and one of my coworkers, we asked her and she said, I'm a peacemaker. And literally I got a phone call from a customer. They were upset about something, they wanted a refund. And I tried to explain to them as nice as I could, you know, this is what's going on right now. Um, and they were livid with me. She called them, got on the phone, got off the phone laughing. The lady was happy. I'm like, I literally said the same thing you just said. Yeah as nice as I could and she was not having it but you talked to her and now the lady's happy she wants to do you know come in and find this she's gonna come shop with us one day and I'm just like what so that was her purpose her purpose is to be a peacemaker I see it happen time and time again so I'm still learning my purpose um I'm okay with saying that and a point that stood out to me that he said Purpose is a journey, not a destination. You don't ever get to purpose. That's good. I forgot he said that. That's good. You walk in it. So it's not something that you just get to it and like, okay, I'm purpose. I'm I'm done. No, like it's constantly, I feel like your purpose constantly evolves. It constantly changes. You constantly grow in it. Um, And your purpose can change over time, I, I do believe, depending on where you are, what season of life you're in, who you're around, I think you you know purpose is not something you just ever get through get to different parts of life and you know your situations affect your purpose sometimes so good i never thought about it that way what was that quote you said earlier uh purpose is not the destination it's something you walk in purpose is a journey not a destination you don't get to purpose you walk in it that is so good Mm -hmm. that's just my whole life i'm literally i'm literally about to write that down (laughs) I, me when I said that, but now that you said it, I remember that now. That is really good. I feel like we could watch the same like episode over and over and over, and you will get new revelations from it every time. <laughs> so. I love talking about it. Um, you and I and a couple other people are in um, like a group me, a group chat about um, relationship goals. I'm in mean, this separately here in Tampa. I have a couple friends in my age group that um, we, as, as soon as the sermon on, we always get a phone call. And it's uh-huh. so interesting to like, hear people's thoughts of how you can watch something, I can watch something, and then we like both get facts and gems from it. So it's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. 
kind of bounce ideas off of that. I think it's pretty dope. Pretty dope. Too. Especially, I think, I'm just add this before you. Oh, no. I think too, when depending on what season of life you're in or whatever you may be going through, you may hear different things di differently or things may hit differently. So just hearing it from another person, you know what they got from it, you may not have even thought of it that way, but because they're going through something or they can relate to it in this way or they have been through something, you know they bring it out in a different light. That's good. I like that having shared experiences. That's that's pretty cool. Come on, you preaching real good. Real good. Um, and then last but not least, the sixth pillar is parameters. Uh, parameters. So the verse for this is uh, Genesis 2 and 16, where the Lord warned him, you may eat freely the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Talk to me about parameters. I think a lot of times people see parameters as restrictions. Um, people see parameters as don't do this, don't do that. Um, kind of like a, a way to kind of suffocate them. But I really love how the pastor Mike Todd explained to us that parameters are there to protect us. Parameters are there to, to kind of help uh, guide us into our destiny. So what are your thoughts on, on his parameters? Yes, so I have a couple points on this. Um, I really like that. And he was saying how once you get to a point in your relationship, you know, you've matured in God when you're no longer trying to figure out how much sin can you do before it's sin. It's when you can do stuff that's not sin <laughs> and you're so mature now that you're not even trying to figure out if it's a sin or not. Like how many beers can I have before I'm drunk? Because the Bible says... Like, I don't, I can sip, but I ain't, like, let's go to the reason why you're sipping. Is it for peace? Because if you need peace, there's an alternate. And you can still set a good example for your kids. Because do you want your kids to be alcoholics? When they're going through pressure, do you want them to run the pills in a bottle? Or are you doing that to cope? And God says, I can trade you. Trade me your yoke. Give me your burden. I'll do something different for you. But all of us many times never matured to the place where we're like, is that the line? And God's saying is, I'm trying to set parameters for you that may not even be for your neighbor. What happens when God says something for you that doesn't apply for everybody? Uh oh, you want to talk about spiritual maturity? You want to talk about when God tells people to give 10% in the word, but he tells you to give 15? Wow. What happens when God says you fast every Thursday, even though the church is not on a fast? What happens when God says you go pick up your sister's kids and love on them because they don't have a father and he didn't tell nobody else to do that? God's saying, I'm giving you parameters because I'm trying to build something in you. Like he used the example of drinking. How many beers can I drink before I get drunk? Because... You know, drunkenness is a sin, but you know, I can have a drink or two. Like, no, how about you just Friend, not you have talking a drink? <laughs> you talking directly to me. I was convicted, okay? Or one that's coming, um, I don't know. It's just, it's no longer like you just, you, you, you know for a fact, like, okay, I'm just not going to do this. This is sin or this is wrong, or I'm not going to see and try to figure out how much of this I can do, I can get away with before it's just wrong. Like, you have come to that level of maturity in your relationship and you're not even going to try to test the waters or you you've grown from that um and also he said when god set parameters that only apply to you oh. so i think this is tough when when you have like a cl close group of friends and you get a calling from god or god tells you like um uh okay don't drink for a a year okay why why, why don't you want me to drink or because you know some people drink i don't drink but and all your friends, that's all they do. So how do you how do you deal in that situation? Um, you may even lose some friends over it because that's what they like to do. They want to turn up all the time or they only like to have fun by drinking or what happens when, you know, the, the parameters only apply to you and your friends can't even relate or you try to find someone to talk to about it and your friends can't understand because God didn't call them to that saying, you know, purpose or call them to that parameter of, you know. Like almost like you're being elevated to like a different level. You're going somewhere yeah. different than you're going. Or like when your friends are moving on and you have the abilities to do other things or get a new job, but you're staying in this situation because God hasn't told you to move yet. Like what do you do when you see everybody doing everything you want to do? And you could be there, but you, you God hasn't told you to move yet. Yeah. Or, 
do this or you know so that was that one kind of hit home too like what what do you think is the biggest there's a whole lot i wrote a whole page of notes but what's you think the biggest thing you learned from this past week's happened mm. before that's a tough question because when i'm looking at my notes i don't even know if i can answer that i feel like i learned 20 things he told me mm. about my so good. huh I said he told me about myself real good. So I learned 50,000 oh. things. Too many. I'm going to just have to lump everything together and go with the topic of the message, message and just be happy before. Don't mm. wait on that person to bring that happiness to you. Be content in yourself. You have to be whole and content with yourself before you go. You think a person is going to come and complete you and make you happy. And once you get the perfect person, y'all can start this life together. Like, no, you can be happy before the person. So... I think my biggest takeaway is just learning to be happy before. Cause I'm not gonna lie, I a lot of times before I would always equate like not equate my happiness to another person, but that's one of my ideas of happiness is mm -hmm. having that person that I can share my happiness with. So I think it's very important to, you know, find that happiness before and not think that it lies in another person or you have to have that person before you can truly be happy so Absolutely. i think that's my overall takeaway i love that i think i'm i'm very similar to that just i think i knew this but it's like a good reminder you know sometimes with the word of god you got to be reminded of certain things and so because i'm single now like i shouldn't wait till i get the perfect woman and then press play like i should be pressing play now going into my destiny fully and going into my purpose and so mike ty you just you did it again okay yeah did it again boy he did yes, he did yeah so hey we're <laughs> Where can people find you at? Where What are your socials? You can find me on all social media platforms at the Tierra Makia, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. I'm on all those platforms. Oh. Follow me, subscribe, like. I follow back. <laughs> she's, a, she's a top model. She's going to be a model one day. I think you're going to be acting. <laughs> I see you living in L.A. I'm in an act, acting career now, so we'll see. That's awesome. <laughs> I feel like L.A. in my spirit with you, so I'm excited to see where it goes. But hey, thanks so much for this conversation. Um, this was really good. It was so good just to bounce ideas off you, and it was just, it was just amazing. Well, I thank you for asking me. It was an honor when you asked me. I was like, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Took us a minute to get here, but we got it together. We got it. We got it right now. So hey, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to leave some comments down below, um, and then follow me online at great underscore things. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.